A letter to visitors of the International Space Flight Museum. Written by Troy McConaughey, Troy McLuhan in Second Life. Dear Visitor, This letter and tour offer a brief summary of the early days of the Space Flight Museum, a project that I was involved with for about two years. We begin at a model of the International Space Station. It was built by Gamel Goodfellow, and Kanker Greenacre built the space shuttle that's docking with it. The reason that I'm starting with a space station is that another space station inspired the founding of the Space Flight Museum. I wasn't there at the founding of the Space Flight Museum, but the story goes something like this. Burning Life 2005 was in August and September that year. Participants built all kinds of odd and remarkable things, and one of those things was a rusty old space station by Gearsaw Stonecutter. I visited Burning Life 2005, but don't remember seeing the old space station. Someone else did, and they suggested creating a spaceflight museum. Kat Lemieux was the museum's founder. She's an electronic publishing consultant who was living in Florida at the time. When she was in high school, her father had worked as an engineer at Cape Canaveral, and she had also done some work for the U.S. space program in the 1980s. The newly founded museum needed land, so Green Hornet donated a parcel in the mainland sim named Aglia. That first parcel was very laggy, so Nash Rambler donated a parcel in Nessus. Even more exciting, a real estate mogul promised to donate a whole private sim once the museum got going. This is one of the museum's first exhibits. It's a model of the Viking landers that visited Mars in 1976. It was built by Kanker Greenacre. I once showed this model to Corey Linden, the creator of the Linden scripting language. He said that his dad had been involved in the design of the cameras on the Viking landers. In October of 2005, I did a search for museum or something like that. I found the Space Flight Museum in Nessus and thought it was cool. I love museums and have always been interested in space and science. I signed up to help and also started going to the weekly planning meetings. One of the first things I did was make signs for the rockets, spacecraft, and other exhibits that had been accumulating. Visitors who clicked the sign would be given a note card with an explanation of the exhibit. Many of those note cards are still in the signs today. Here we see another of the first exhibits, a robotic arm. If you click the buttons on the control panel, you can make the various joints rotate. The robotic arm was built and scripted by Gearsaw Stonecutter, who's something of a scripting wizard. Gearsaw has since become an expert on using 3D Studio Max to create elaborate low-prim homes using Sculpties. You can find his stuff if you do a search for the Gadget Shop and Quality Homes. Most of the rockets at the Space Flight Museum were made by Jimbo Perhaps, an engineer and graphic designer in Canada. In fact, Jimbo was making new rockets so fast that we were running out of land in Nessus. We started putting new exhibits on a temporary platform floating above an Aglia parcel owned by Cat Lemieux. Unfortunately, the real estate mogul wasn't following through with his promise to donate a private sim. That situation dragged on for a few months in early 2006. Eventually, I said the heck with it. I would buy a private sim, and others could pitch in to help cover the purchase price if they wanted. In the end, my contribution to the purchase wasn't even the largest. I bought Spaceport Alpha in April of 2006. Owning a whole sim meant paying $195 US dollars per month to Linden Lab. We had to act fast to do some fundraising. We set out donation tip jars all over the museum. Hero Pendragon built the gift shop and the backdrop at the central stage. These days, Hero's with an SL solution provider company named Involve. But back then, he was a solo metaverse developer. We decided to call the relocated museum the International Space Flight Museum. The official opening was in June of 2006. Here we see a simple dock with some plain wooden chairs circling a brick fire pit. This is where the Space Flight Museum Planning Group used to have its weekly meetings. It's where we debated whether or not to incorporate the museum as a formal nonprofit company. 
It's where we reviewed the latest exhibits for inclusion. It's also where we planned upcoming events. See the scripted water ripples coming off the dock posts? Those were made by Gearsaw Stonecutter. Spaceport Alpha has over 1,500 active scripts. Any history of the Space Flight Museum must mention Hilary Pascal. She's a person of few words but many creations. She built most of the interplanetary spacecraft models at the museum, including this model of the Cassini spacecraft at Saturn. Making these models wasn't easy because the engineering blueprints are often not available to the general public. Hillary based her 3D models mostly on photos and 2D illustrations. Here we see a giant map of Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral, Florida. Note the little markers with hover text that says where they point. This map was assembled by Chris Reitfeld, who works as a volunteer at an Air Force museum on the Cape. Across the water to the east is Spaceport Bravo, the museum's second sim. Spaceport Bravo was donated by Kira Ball and had its grand opening on May 5, 2007. Because of scripting limitations, this tour can't cross into Spaceport Bravo, but I encourage you to visit there later. You'll see a Saturn V rocket by Da Vinci Doctoro, a detailed model of the space shuttle by Jimbo Perhaps, and a model of the vehicle assembly building by Chris Reitfeld. There's also a second gift shop and the current meeting rooms of the Space Flight Museum Planning Group. Today, Spaceport Bravo is funded by an anonymous private donor. People from NASA first started looking at using Second Life seriously in mid-2006. They often visited the Space Flight Museum and used it as a demonstration of what's possible. Today, NASA has several sims in Second Life. I should note that the Space Flight Museum gets no funding from NASA or any other federal agency. The International Space Flight Museum incorporated as a real nonprofit company at the end of October in 2006. Cat Lemieux was the first president, and I was the first vice president. In December 2006, people with science or technology-related sims met to discuss forming a continent together. Those discussions led to the founding of the Scilands, which today has over 60 sims and includes more than 20 government agencies, universities, and organizations, including NASA. This map of the Scilands is out of date. To see the latest map, just click the Map button in the lower right corner of your Second Life window. In many ways, the Space Flight Museum was a spark and an inspiration, showing the world what's possible in a place like Second Life. Today, many of the early contributors to the museum have moved on to other things. I'm no longer involved in any formal way, but I still visit from time to time and reminisce about the early days. If you'd like to get involved with the Space Flight Museum, Please contact Paradox Olbers.